Welcome back to Bailey's Bleacher. Today we are going to talk about UFC 296 and all of its glory. Yeah guys, so um, UFC 296 was a great card going into the evening. Um, there was a lot of hype around this event, especially because it is the last UFC event of 2023. So that was already, bam, lots of interest right there. Um, and then it had some decent names on the card, and then there was a lot of drama at the press conference. So this was everywhere, um, in sports news, whatever. Um, so the main drama was between welterweight champion Leon Rocky Edwards and Colby the Chaos Covington. Um, and boy was there chaos, and boy was it Rocky. I might cut that out, geez, sorry. Um, <laughs> I thought that was gonna be fun. Anyway, so at the press conference, Covington, he was cracking jokes. He came dressed up as George Washington, as he does. Um, people were laughing, and then he stepped over the line. Um, he got into some banter with Edwards, and then Covington used Edward, Edwards' dad's death as a dig or a joke, which is just morally wrong. Like, you don't do that. Um, so, like, I get it. Like, it's a press conference. It's literally used to get the fighters, like, going at each other, getting some beef, getting under each other's skin, and, like, lighting fires. Like, I totally understand it, but there are just some lines you don't cross. And joking about someone's father who passed away is one of those lines. Um, but, like, at the same time, this is a part of the game, so, like, I get it, but I don't agree with it at all. Like, it's definitely wrong. Um, in retaliation, Edwards threw his water bottle at Covington, and, you know, it was just typical press conference drama. Um, so then let's get into the actual fights. Like, put drama aside, let's get to the actual fighting. Um, honestly, the prelims were way more exciting than the main event, or even some of the main card, really. Um, so let's look at some of the highlights. So, really quick, um, the early prelims included the first performance of the night. There were three given out. Um, but in the first one, Shamil Gazeev made his UFC debut in the heavyweight division. Um, Gazeev got a second round TKO, putting him at 12 and 0 in his career and 1 and 0 in the UFC. Um, the ref had to step in and call it because Martin Budai was just getting pieced up. And Gazeev is actually the first person to ever finish Budai, which is super cool um, and obviously deserving of performance of the night, especially in your debut. Crazy stuff, right? So then, right after that, there's a first round knockout for Andre Feely over Lucas Almeida. And you need to listen to this punch. Everybody. Like, oh, oh, yikes. Like, that is horrible. Like, that sounds so painful. And clearly it was. Um, the ref had to step in and he stopped the fight. It was a great first round TKO. And then, right after that, Cody Durden submitted to Tagir Olanbakov in the second round of their fight as you can see in this video. Like, you have a knockout, and then you got a submission, and before that you had, like, one of the performances of the night. So early prelims were going hard, right? So then you get to the regular prelims. Um, there was another performance of the night right off the bat. It went to Ariana Lipsky, who put on quite the show. Um, she was super dominant throughout the entire fight, and then she puts Casey O'Neill in this crazy arm bar, forcing her to tap in the second round. And the, some of the guys were saying, uh, like, the announcers, they were saying, like, oh, like, it's a good thing, like, that she tapped because a few seconds longer of that arm bar and her arm would have snapped at the elbow. Looked super painful to be in that situation, so I totally understand the tap there. Um, but the Brazilian, uh, she is now 17-8 and eight in her UFC career in the flyweight division, and she is on a five-fight win streak, which is awesome for her. Um, and this puts her in the top 15. So, like, when you're hot, you're hot. And she is hot, so... Um, after that, um, in the prelims, Cody Garbant got a first round TKO on Brian Kelleher with a quick right that got Kelleher on the chin and it was done. It was done just like that. Um, it was a great knockout and a quick finish in the octagon. Um, so then in the prelims fight of the night went to Reina Aldana and Carol Hosa in the bantamweight division, which ended in a round three decision in favor of Aldana. So the two went back and forth with significant strikes. And honestly, if you look at the numbers, Hosa should have won. Um, she outstruck Aldana 204 to 145. But if you look at the damage, Hosa's face was destroyed. She had cuts, she had bruising, she had significant swelling. And yeah, Aldana had some, her face was pretty messed up too, but Hosa's was just completely destroyed. Um, 
So that ended up being a unanimous decision for Aldana, and like this was by far one of the best fights of the year. These women went hard in the octagon. They were fighting so tough against each other. Um, and it was just the full three rounds. It was just at each other's throats the whole time. It was actually a really exciting fight to watch. Um, and so easily um, fight of the night and quite possibly one of the best fights of the year. Um, so then capping off the prelims, let's see. Alonzo Menafield, uh, he finished out the prelims with a unanimous decision win over Dustin Jacoby. He dropped, a co uh, <laughs> he dropped Jacoby twice and added takedown, um, and that was enough in the judges' eyes to give him the unanimous decision. Uh, so then, moving on to the main card, some highlights from that. Josh Emmett, he got the third performance of the night. He had a crazy knockout on Bryce Mitchell. It literally sent Bryce Mitchell into a seizure. It was super scary to watch, but the knockout was just incredible. Um... It was just like a hard shot and I literally gasped when it happened. I was like, this did not just happen. I was like, oh my gosh, like it was crazy. Um, so what happened was is Mitchell went for a right hook and he missed. He just clearly, we went right over, he missed and that opened up a clear shot for Emmett who nailed him with an, a right hand and they ended that fight right in round one with that knockout. So that was, that was a pretty intense fight. It was quick, but it was crazy. Um, so now let's talk about Patty Pimblett versus Tony Ferguson in the lightweight division. So going into this fight, well, it shouldn't have even happened. This fight should have been done before it was even booked. Ferguson should have retired. So Ferguson is on a seven fight losing streak and his last win was in 2019. That is when I graduated high school and I have been out of college for almost a year now. It just, it, mm. It should have been done. He's obviously an incredible fighter, but you know, he's 39 now and he is losing consistently. So then you put him up against Patty, who's 11 years younger than him. And he's in his prime and he's in a seven fight win streak. Um, I just think the fight was clear as day right off the bat. Patty was gonna win. Um, so like the only way Ferguson would have won is if he like had a really clean shot randomly. Um, or if Patty made some like stupid mistake. And like, yes, it could happen. It's fighting. You never know what's going to happen, but like it didn't, you know? <laughs> so Patty came out looking great. He looked healthy. He looked strong. He was in the zone right out of the gates. Um, so he came out with some cornrows, which was very off brand of him. As we know, he usually likes to wear his hair just fluffy, big and unkept, <laughs> but it clearly worked. So whatever. Um, but Patty clearly won every single round. It was evident. He had like 60 more strikes than Ferguson and he had a takedown and it was just a clear unanimous decision for Patty the Batty. So he's on a roll. He had so much ground control throughout this fight as well. Um, he just dominated in all areas. And honestly, I'm shocked that Ferguson did not retire right after that. But again, maybe he wants to go out with a win. So you never know. Um, but I really think he needs to retire here pretty soon. It's, it's a lose streak and I don't know, either step it up or retire, I guess. So then Shavkat Rachmanov is now 18 and 0 after becoming the first to ever submit Stephen Thompson, AKA Wonder Boy. And boy, did he have him wondering. Um, but Shavkat was dominant the whole fight. And then he got the submission in the second round and like, oh, he is just crazy. He's crazy tough. He's so powerful. Um, he's such a great fighter and he is definitely going to keep climbing in this welterweight division. Um, after that, the co-main event happened and it was a unanimous decision win for Alexandra Pantoja over Brandon Royval. Um, so Pantoja defended his flyweight title and honestly, yeah, like there were a lot of takedowns on his end. So that's really why he won. Um, he just had so much control in the octagon, which is super deserving of keeping his title. So, you know, but then again, I, I still found the prelims more exciting than any of this so far on the main card. Um, so then the main event happened. Chaos versus Rocky. Edwards looked like he barely had to fight Covington um, the entire time. Like, I was rooting for Covington going into this, and I thought he was going to pull out all sorts of wrestling on Edwards, but like he didn't. Um, so, you know, I just, this one was interesting to me. 
He tried to play like Edward's game and he lost. Um, Covington really didn't do anything noteworthy in the fight at all. He had 10 takedown attempts and only landed two. And he's literally a wrestler and I just thought that was weird because I really thought that's where he was going to score. Like throughout this whole fight, I thought he was going to get a ton of takedowns and just dominate on the ground, but he didn't. Like he was just playing Edward's game. Um, so even Edwards had two takedowns, like, it's crazy to me that he attempted that on a wrestler, but like, it worked out in his favor, so like, good for you. Edwards ended up having 57 significant strikes to Covington's 44, but Edwards didn't even look like he really even had a scratch on him. Um, he also really hurt Covington's thigh, like, that looked painful. He kept kicking the exact same spot, and the bruise that occurred from this looked awful. I was like, ugh, horrible. Um... But Edwards, yeah, like, he controlled the pace the whole time, and honestly, it was a super boring fight to end the night. I kind of wish I went to sleep instead of staying up for that. Like, I was up till 1 a.m. for that when I was, like, did not need to. Um, I also lost money, so that was really fun, so thanks. Um, <laughs> but it was also crazy. So, in the post-interviews, after Edwards unanimously won, like, clearly... Covington said that he genuinely thought that he had won and that this was like the easiest fight of his life. But like maybe it was so easy because you didn't do anything, like nothing happened and whatever. But Edwards came out super composed and he just struck when he needed to. And you know, he did end the fight on his back, um, but that was like the only time Covington really did anything and it was too late, so it didn't matter. Um, but Edwards with the win, keeping his title. So now it's time for some quick notes, and I really just want to talk about this little fight that broke out in the crowd, actually, between Sean Strickland and Dracius Duplessis. So they put the two on camera, right? And, you know, they're a row away from each other, which I don't know who arranged the seating chart or if they just happened to get those seats, whatever. But they put the two on camera, and, you know, Strickland does a little pew-pew, and uh, du <laughs> Duplessis, like, dodged his little fake shot, right? And then, you know, Duplessis mouths something. We don't know what he said, but you can see in the video, like, he says something to Strickland. Strickland turns around. He tells this little kid who's in the row behind him. He's like, yo, get out of the way. And then all of a sudden, he starts attacking Duplessis. And, like, he hits him hard. Like, this was nuts. Um, it was ridiculous. It was uncalled for. And, yeah, you need to check this out. Like, that is nuts. Like, that is literally nuts. Like, he is insane. Um, yeah, but, you know, that's all I have for Bailey's Bleacher today. Um, so make sure you tune in next time. We're going to talk about some more sports. And thank you for listening about UFC 296.